Typically, superheroes are meant to be cool. You are supposed to like them, relate with them. You are supposed to think they are cool. And you're supposed to like buy their merchandise and stuff. And most importantly, their powers and abilities must be good. Their stories must be good, and their stories must revolve around their powers and abilities. Some others, on the other hand, oh god, these are just awful. In no particular order, here are some superheroes that are either just weird, have bad powers, some are just bad, and others are god-awfully downright abysmal. First up, Stone Boy from DC Comics. His power is literally the stone copy ability from Kirby. He turns into it, he turns into an invincible stone statue and cannot move. That's it. That's literally it. Magent Magent from JoJo's Bizarre Adventure has the same ability minus the stone, and even he was more interesting. Stone Boy, everybody. Speaking of boys. Next is Crime Buster from Boy Comics. This guy's name is as stupid as the name of his company. His parents were killed by the far more interesting Iron Jaw, a Nazi with a bear trap for a mouse. Crime Buster has no powers, but he does have a monkey sidekick for some reason. Brother Power the Geek has half of a cool name. He is described as a thing that lives and fights for its soul, which makes him sound way cooler than he actually is. He is a mannequin that was left in an abandoned building. One day, some hippies put clothes on him and then ran off and he was forgotten about for months. The mannequin was then struck by lightning and came to life and had superpowers! Brother Power was supposed to be a wandering philosopher type guy, like Silver Surfer, but you know, inspired by Frankenstein. He was going to be called the Freak, but that had drug connotation at the time, so it was dropped and replaced with the Geek. Ironically, nowadays, if you know about who Brother Power is, chances are you yourself are a geek. Gunfire from DC Comics is probably the most American superhero. His power is that anything he picks up becomes a gun. For his neutral special, he wields a gun. Mick would work way better as a video game than a comic. The first of many, many Marvel characters that will be on this list is actually a variant of Spider-Man. It's a Spider-Rex from Earth-66. You know, get it like 66 million years ago when um, the KPG mass extinction happened? Yeah, it's a joke. So remember that Spider-Man T-Rex that you saw in Spider-Verse and in the Walmart toy aisle? It, yeah, he's actually real. And it's one hell of a weird story, so I'm just gonna read it directly off the wiki. One, one day on prehistoric Earth, the T-Rex Noranosaurman and his lackeys pursued the weakling Pteranodon Turtarker. RT sign. Turtarker. I read dinosaur names quite often, and I'm having a difficult time with this. Let's just call him Peter Pteranodon. Just as Norana Storm and Bitten uh, Parker both were hit by a meteorite containing alien spiders. When they awoke, the two found that they had switched bodies, like that one episode of Family Guy or any other cartoon that's been going on for too long and needs a gimmick episode. Which now they were both clad in colorful costumes. Loranosaurman once more attacked Peter Pterarker, uh, the Pteranodon, for the theft of his body. But Peter Pteranodon fought off Loranosaurman and his lackeys with his new spider powers. Uh, now powerful and confident, uh, Peter Pteranodon, who is no longer Pteranodon, swung away, but the tree branch he but the tree branch he grabbed onto broke, and he fell down, crushing Noranosaurman and the two innocent dino standers. <laughs> I like the fact that that translates to terrible standers. Um, horrified by the result of his recklessness, the amazing Spider Rex learned the power of responsibility. It, yeah, Spider-Man, but he's a dinosaur. Another Marvel character is Big Bursa. 
She, she is a supermodel who gained the power to grow to any size and gain super strength. So she decided to become a Discord moderator. Her power is basically Nikocado Avocado. Damn, this is just a fetish character. In the same team as Big Bursa is Leather Boy. Ew. His superpowers are nothing. He was looking for BDSM swings in the newspaper and instead responded to a newspaper ad for heroes. Also, he's straight, despite dressing as gay as possible. But now, you think this guy would have some redeeming qualities, but he doesn't. Like, no redeeming qualities whatsoever. You think, like, oh, maybe he's a Judas Priest reference. You know, like, this is the same way that Rob Halford would dress. Nope. No, no redeeming qualities. In fact, he became a villain at one point, and only has one crime under his belt, and that is murder of a squirrel. He murdered a squirrel. Who, who the hell thought this was a good idea? A, a BDSM guy in a, com a children's comic book. Uh, kids, read this for Christ's sakes. Alright, uh, here's the refresher. Matter Eater Lad. <laughs> Hailing from Ripley's Believe It or Not, I mean DC Comics. He could eat anything! And that's it. That's his power. You now, speaking about that little one off comment about Ripley's Believe It or Not, there actually is one guy who is the real life equivalent to Matter Eater Lad. He can literally eat anything, and in fact, over the course of like three to six years, he um, ate an airplane. Like, this real guy ate an airplane. I have to look him up. Here is a novel superhero from Antarctic Publishing, Tom Diesel. You think he'd be a car guy or something, but no, that's not him. This is Tom Diesel. So then, who is the buff guy? Is this a Hulk situation? No, the buff guy is Diesel's fighting spirit. That's right, this man is a stand user. We have an American comic book hero who is a knockoff of Jotaro Kujo. Tootsie Man just advertises Tootsie Rolls. He tells kids that Tootsie Rolls will give them enough power and energy to do anything. This man encourages children to get hyper on candy. Oh yeah, and another thing, his name sounds like a slur. Friggin' Tootsie Man. Disgrace of Tootsie Man. Um, another variant of Spider Man, one of the most fringing Spider Man, he would easily have to be Penny Parker. No, I'm not talking about the movie version of Penny, I mean the original Penny Parker. Yes, she is technically a variant of Spider Man, but. She doesn't swing around, and she fights in a mech. She is so far from the original. Like, to the point where this Spider-Man comic is, is no longer a Spider-Man comic. It, it's Neogenesis Evangelion. My heart and tarnation is an Evangelion. One Evangelion later. That's quite literally what it is. It straight up even references Evangelion. There are background characters who are named after the Ava Trio, Shinji, Asuka, and Rei. Now a special segment dedicated to mutants. Remember when Professor X said that all powers are valuable? He was lying. Here are some real stinkers. This is Beak. Beak's mutation turned him half bird. His bones are hollow, and his entire body is extremely ugly. That is it. This poor man lives a truly cursed existence. The only love he could ever find in his life was in a blind woman. Next is Forget-Me-Not. Yes, that's actually his name. His powers are... Wait, who's next again? Well, let me look at the script. Uh... 
Oh yeah, forget me not. Um, he can only be remembered if he's right in front of you. If he's not, you forget he ever existed and are only reminded once he's right in front of you again. It is impossible for him to make any sort of relationship. The second mutant on here is M Let's go! Maggots! He acts more like a stand user than anything. He can't eat. Instead, he sends out two gremlins to eat for him and it returns the nutrients. I'm not even sure if this guy's actually a superhero. Because like, he sounds more like a villain than anything. Um, and I do suppose this could be a good ability if you like specs into cannibalism. But like I've never heard of this guy and I, I wrote a quick paragraph about him. So, you know, if you have anything, if you have any more information on Maggot from the X-Men, let me know in the comments. Jazz has the power of having blue skin. He can't turn it off. He just permanently has blue skin. Oh, I'm blue. Da -ba -dee, da -ba -dee, da -ba -dee, da -ba -dee. If I were green, I would die. That's not the lyrics of the song. Zeitgeist vomits acid. Long Neck has a long ass neck. Ugly John has three faces. Glob Herman has the power to turn his skin translucent. He, he can't turn it off. His skin is permanently translucent. And you can like see his bones and organs and nerves and stuff. Gold Balls it shoots golden balls at people through his chest. This guy's name is Ice Cream. His power is being able to turn into any flavor of ice cream. Next up, the one guy you wouldn't expect to show up on a list like this. Wolverine. Logan has two powers. One, godlike regeneration. Two, giant bone claws. Eventually, he got an adamantium skeleton which gave him his signature metal claws. Drawing out the claws is extremely painful. Because unlike cats, he doesn't have little pockets to keep the, the claws in. Instead, he literally has to shoot them out through his skin. Also, he needs to have his, uh, his hand and his arm aligned just right, or else the claws will shoot out from his wrists. Later on in life, Wolverine would have to manually pull out the claws, which hurts even more. Remember how I said Wolverine has an adamantium skeleton? You know, a metal? His skeleton gave him cancer. Also, the X-Men are always fighting against Magneto. As the name is probably suggests, he controls metals. Poor Wolverine has had his skeleton ripped out by Magneto several times. And the worst part of all of this is that Wolverine and his powers existing indirectly led to the creation of Deadpool. Deadpool is minions, but for edgy losers in middle school. Bailey Hoskins has the mutant power to blow himself up in a fiery explosion. No, he does not survive blowing himself up. This is a child whose mutant power is being a suicide bomber. What in God's name were these writers thinking? <coughs> hey, wait a minute. If it's a one-time use ability, so I... How do they know his power is blowing himself up? God, this, is, this is just like the Carne situation, but like worse. How do they know what the character's power is if the power requires the character to die to activate it? So do you remember that one scene from Charlie and the Chocolate Factory where that little rich brat gets dragged to hell by squirrels? That too can be your fate thanks to the powers of Squirrel Girl. And she sends out radio waves that mind control squirrels and make them bend to her will. I'm not kidding. And somehow, um, due to the char because of the Charlie and Chocolate Factory explanation I gave, she is somehow still cooler than Aquaman. The final mutant in this segment is Russell. The drummer of the English rock band, or at least it used to be a rock band, Gorillaz. Gorillaz. 
Okay, yeah, in the Gorilla's War, yes, there is a war, it has been stated that Russell once attended Xavier's school for gifted children. Yes, the X-Men school was whack. No more mutants. This is Puck. What are you looking at, you hockey puck? Puck used to be the most badass and sexiest man alive, but one day he had some beef with a wizard. The wizard turned him into an immortal midget. Arm fall off, boy. I repeat, arm fall off, boy. What you see is what you get. <laughs> Finally, the worst superhero of all time. I'm going to take Mandy from I'm from I am not Starfire. Mandy is the daughter of Starfire from the Teen, from the Teen Titans, and her powers are being the absolute most Mary Sue ass Mary Sue to ever Mary Sue in the whole history of Mary Sues. Not even the original Mary Sue from that one Star Trek fan fiction was this bad. And the cherry on top of all of this is that Mandy looks exactly like her creator. That's right, Mandy is a self-insert character. God, this is Tumblr-ass deviant art levels of cringe. And it is an official comic book in the D in DC. Who greenlit this? Alright, what is Mandy's personality? She is just an asshole at all times and is always pissed off at everything. Except whenever she's not having a mental breakdown over literally anything. Mandy is obese and unpleasant to look at and for whatever reason her concept art has her in a bikini. I hate that. Starfire has been a good and present mother her entire life. She has had a perfect life that she has for whatever reason been uncontent with since birth. Mandy once got pissed off that Starfire invited the other Teen Titans over. Her mother friends in her mother's house and she had the audacity to throw a fit. Despite all of this, Mandy gets away and with whatever she wants and always gets her way. She gets a perfect girlfriend with no effort whatsoever. Eventually Starfire tells Mandy the story about how she had to leave her home planet and that Darkfire, Starfire's evil twin sister, is more powerful than her. Keep that in mind. But then, oh no! Darkfire comes to Earth! And she's come to finish the war for the ownership of that alien planet they come from! And, alright. The war for the ownership of an alien planet. You think it would take place on the planet itself? No, it takes place on Mandy's school's football field. Starfire tries fighting to protect her daughter, but gets one shot by Darkfire. But then in a time of desperation, Mandy awakens her powers and immediately one-shots Darkfire. It, you know, the one who was literally just said to be stronger than Starfire. Mandy then becomes a superhero, flying around fighting crime while still not having lost weight or changed her appearance outside of wearing a cape. So now she looks ridiculous doing it. <laughs> This is by far the worst character ever. My god, it is awful. I, for some of these, I gave you a, synop a synopsis of the character. For Mandy, I give you a synopsis of the whole book just to explain how 
fucking god awful this character is. There is no redeeming qualities about Mandy whatsoever. And she is somehow the daughter of Starfire, one of the best characters in DC. Why did this exist? Who, who, who greenlit this? Hold on. Well, what was this? Huh. Looks like I missed like a great deal of weird superheroes and weird supervillains. And oh my god. Two entire teams of horrendous heroes? God, I've hit a gold mine. A double gold mine. And the Will Mastodon Man covered DC's new Guardians or the new Warriors of Marvel. Stay tuned for the next issue of Mastodon Man! <laughs> I'm all out of water. <laughs> no stupid joke. <laughs> Two! <laughs>